Okay? All right. So you guys are doing well. No points here, but you're doing well. <laughs> this time I think we'll give Vanita ji the chance first. <laughs> of course, let's do it. <laughs> so the next one. Here we have the Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> Everybody knows about it. There's so many things here. I mean, the Titanic was the biggest ship built like a hundred years ago, but it sank in its maiden voyage. There was also a famous movie about it. I mean, there are a lot of things going on here. So, uh, Vanita, let's start with you. What might this mean? Humongous, humongous ship, first of all. So it is... Uh, I take a ship as a Jupiter. Uh, I could be wrong, but I feel the first glance that I see is like Jupiter to me. And then uh, in Cancer, exalted Jupiter. And uh, uh, I see the four uh, uh, chimneys or whatever you call them in between. So that also is representing, you know, uh, something to do with four. So it's like, a cancer Jupiter and it is uh, uh, then uh, a little bit of Saturn because of the black uh, which is involved in this and a lot of um, luxurious uh, Venus Venetian traits you know you can see because it was at that time it was a luxury to sail the ones who did they it was a luxury you know at being the first sail so it is Number one, so Venus in the Lagna, I can say, in the Ascendant. So um, I, I feel that, uh, I, I think it is, it is, I think that's it. I, I, okay. I don't want to say anything. Yeah. Go for it, Lars. Well, I think, I think Venita is definitely right about the Jupiter piece. Definitely. And I think... I would agree with that. I just, it's just that for some reason, when I first looked at it, I just got this heavy hit of Saturn. And that could just be because it's like big and black and black and white photo. Um, that could be because it, it sunk too. Uh, Saturn rules all like subterranean things and it has rulership over drowning too, or wants some rulership over that. So there was partly that, but I sort of, I sort of wanted to go with like Saturn, Neptune conjunction somewhere because of you know what happened with it it was like there was so much glamour surrounding this ship and the journey and there was all of this confusion and kind of uh, I don't know like maybe a, a certain amount of narcissism too um, because there was like this idea of oh we want to we want to get there to where we're going in like record time and um, that I was just like so confusing how it sunk. It was just such a Neptune thing to me that that it sunk and that sort of a thing. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Saturn Neptune. <laughs> Babaji, yeah, when I see this, I to some extent I remember the Nakshatra Shravan because that has, uh, if they say if Shravan Nakshatra has a planet which is afflicted very badly, or especially if the moon or the ascendant, then that person will always ignore the good which other people tell him in his ears. And that is what happened. There, there, there are many yeah. stories and many articles which you can read that they had got many, 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 many warnings that there is an iceberg ahead. But there's this whole story of RMS Carpathia and that there's other ships. So there, there's a big controversy there. There's a big uh, thing which I will not go into. So they, because of their pride that, because they had also said that uh, this is a ship which even God cannot sink. So mm. I see that this element of Rahu is also there in it. That they try to show that, oh, we are, we are, we are the best actually. No, no, we are even greater than God. Somebody like Ravan or Hirnakashyap we have in our Indian Vedic literature. So th that tendency is also there. And at the end, they uh, they met their fate in very bad ways. And same happened with the ship. So I see Rahu and I also see Jupiter because uh, I, I see that they, uh, this, they had different uh, what what they said are different areas where different categories of people would board the ship category a category b category c so they had this uh, what i would say you know that the elite class was there and elite people are always represented by jupiter and venus as vanita ji said very well 
So yes, and Rahu because of the smoke also. <laughs> yes, nice. I, I I think also we can see here. Yeah, that's true. That's a very good point. That, that I can see here the idea of Jupiter to the Moksha Rashis in the water signs. How when it was in the harbor, it was like Jupiter in Cancer in a in a in a easy accessible water place. Then when it was in the middle of the sea, it was Jupiter in Pisces just sailing along. And then when it sank and it's in the bottom of the ocean, it's Jupiter in Scorpio, right? And there's also uh, a Jupiter-Venus thing going on here. The idea of being it humongous and the luxury at the same yeah, time. But as we know, mm -hmm. when the two Brahmins are together, sometimes there are problems because they don't get along too well when they're conjunct. And... I mean, I don't want to say this is the reason why it sank, but yeah, the Titanic has a lot of things going on. So I think you guys did great. And what about the sinking part? What do you, um, Mars. you say about the sinking? Mars, the Mars. accident. It was an Mars. accident. Yeah. I, I would also the say... Yeah, the collision, I, yeah. I would also say um, the lot of Nemesis, which is a Hellenistic point that you calculate okay. um, with Saturn and the part of Fortune because there's a line in one of the books where it says that it rules over subterranean fates. Can you explain what, what the lot of nemesis is? Uh, yeah, so, so in Hellenistic astrology, the, um, you calculate the lot of fortune and the lot of spirit by taking the distance between the sun and moon and adding it to the ascendant. And there's a rule based on... Um, whether it's night or day, how you take the calculation. So the lot of spirit and lot of fortune will always be like uh, an equal distance in opposite directions from the ascendant. So at the new moon, they're both on the ascendant. At the full moon, they're both in the um, seventh house. And at the s squares, they're in the the tenth and fourth. And and then everything in between. So then you you can calculate a lot. Those those are respected to the sun and moon. And then you can calculate a lot for each planet by taking certain formulas with a lot of fortune and spirit to those planets. So you get a lot of Jupiter, a lot of Venus, a lot of Saturn, a lot of Mercury, and a lot of Mars. And a lot of Saturn is called Nemesis. Oh, there you go. So yeah. it's a lot of Saturn. Okay. Yeah, so it's the lot of Saturn. Which would be something unfortunate, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's 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 some good stuff written on the internet about them for those who want to look it up. If you look, if you search seven hermetic lots, you'll you'll find something. Anyway, okay. yeah, yeah. When thanks. I see the Titanic, I remember uh, to some extent Vishaka Nakshatra also, because uh, there was one story of a very famous person who wanted to board, but he was f late by five minutes. They say, and the Titanic left. So he was crying, crying, crying. He was lamenting and repenting, you know. Oh my God, I just lost the Titanic. You know, I could not go in the Titanic. I lost the dream. So then finally got the news that the ship, <laughs> the ship went down. So then he wow. started thinking, my God, <laughs> thank God I missed it. <laughs> so what is good? What is bad? You know, those two things are there. It depends on how you see it. So that also. He must be having a strong ninth house. <laughs> <laughs> protection may be there or 11th yeah <clears throat> so let's continue next picture how many are left fernando uh i think three more this and two more if i'm not mistaken i think lars right. will start <laughs> yeah lars can start here we have a butcher right it's a man it has a knife there are specific uh, astrological significators in yotish for butchers and uh, um, yeah, go well, for it, go not, for it, Lars. I'm not sure if I know what those are, but I sort of think of like something to do with Mars K2, maybe. Um, Mars for the obvious reason that he's just cutting things up, but I guess I don't know K2 because there's kind of this aspect of of K2 that does deal with like just with like dead things so to speak because k2 really rejects it rejects everything you know it rejects this reality on some level um and i know there's a i know there's a couple nakshatras too that have to do with butchers as well uh i think sada bishak might be one of them i can't remember but may, maybe you guys can can fill that piece in but i i don't know this one's uh 
like I'm not a hundred percent sure about the K2 component. I'm not going to lie, but, but um, yeah, for some reason I'm, I'm thinking Mars K2. <laughs> Who wants to go next? Vanita. Yeah, I, I can see the Mars and I can see a lot of smile on his face. He's enjoying what he's doing. So uh, a lot of mercurial smile, I would say. And uh, of course, the place itself is like uh, giving a look of a Saturn place because it seems to be quite a, and a Rahu place when it's a little dirty, it's, mm, uh, you know, not organized. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, uh, the non veg, so it's, uh, it's, it's uh, non veg as in like the, uh, the Mars. Mars, too much of Mars, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Yeah, I, I would say I see an afflicted Mars here. <laughs> afflicted? Interesting. Yeah, no, that, I don't think so. <laughs> afflicted because I would say that is taking him to a wrong direction where he's just going on killing animals. Then I see that uh, the nakshatra which is in Aries, which is Bharani nakshatra, that's very much connected with Yamaraj and uh, the slaughter especially. Okay. And uh, I would also say that there's some strong Rahu here I see because the trait of Rahu is that because it is opposite of Jupiter. So sometimes they behave very similarly like Jupiter is expansion and Rahu they say is explosion. And uh, Rahu gives you the feeling sometimes that what you are doing is right even if it's wrong, because that is why you will see a person who has committed something wrong. Even eventually if he, he or she keeps doing it again and again, they don't have that inner conscience that, Oh, I'm doing some, something like this. So I see that Rahu is very strong here. Definitely. And I also see the eighth house because in scriptures, there is a statement where it says that there's a word used called Mamsa. Mamsa means uh, if you kill an animal in this life, then in next life, that animal comes and kills you. So I can see that the smile which he's giving, maybe that will cost him some other day. <laughs> yeah, definitely Rahu. The idea yes, of the, the eighth there. house. I mean, that you die, you kill, and then somebody kills you. You know, that eighth house thing I can see here very strongly. Definitely, definitely. So this, this was good. Let's go to just two more left. So we are almost okay. finished, guys. Two more left. Okay. So, the next one. Here we have a gardener. Gardener. <laughs> he has a blade, but he's in a happy garden. I mean, and he's protected. He's a worker. I mean, there are a lot of things going on here. Who wants to go first? Well, I, I think Babaji. I, I will say, I think I'm seeing a current Saturn's transit in Mula Nakshatra. <laughs> Mula Nakshatra, gardening. <laughs> yeah, because, and I'm seeing he's organizing things very well here. So Saturn is also like that kind of organizing that thing. And I think tomorrow or day after, I'll also make a video on this, how it is related to the sign Sagittarius because SAG is a, they, they say it's a very rebellious sign because it is shooting some somebody that something. If you see the sign Sagittarius. Yes, I can see Saturn in SAG and I can also see Mercury, the green, everything is green here. Yeah, that is all I would say. <laughs> hey, Lars. Um, it, it loosely reminds me of Saturn in Virgo because it's, um, Virgo is very much to me like, uh, the Rashi that I would associate most with, um, farmers. And I mean, he's not farming, but, but just, just farming and working on something like a garden, you know, like there's all these stereotypes about Virgo and some of them are true, of course, where Virgo wants everything to be like really neat, really clean, really, um, you know, that they want, they like nature, but they want to make it look good and so on. And, and I say Saturn because he's clearly, um, you know, he's clearly doing a, a laborious task, you know, he might, he might really enjoy doing it. He doesn't necessarily, look like he's miserable although he doesn't really look like he's having too much fun he, he looks like he's just doing the job because he has to which is a very Saturn thing and and you know and and in a sense a very Virgo thing too very sixth house also so it's it's Saturn and Virgo and, and I, you know actually I, I I know somebody who has uh, Lagna Lord 
Saturn in Virgo. And um, they do do stuff like this. You know, they do go out and like trim parts off trees and uh, go out of their way to like kind of clean up the landscape, the nature and stuff. And they also have a lot of tourists too. Um, so I think any of the earth Rashis, but to me, yeah, Virgo, 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 Virgo. <laughs> Vanita. Yeah. I can see that he is the owner of the humongous house. So he is having a lot of money with him and he's really enjoying what he's doing. Maybe, or maybe he just, uh, you know, the Venus I can see because of the luxury, huge garden that he's, uh, you know, making. And if he's, even if he's working for someone, then also it's a, it's, it's a lot of Venus in this. So uh, number one, and then Mercury, of course, it's a garden. And I see a lot of Ketu because it's cutting, trimming. So that is Ketu. Definitely. Mm. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I think he's listening to music also. Is he? I can't mm -hmm. see. It. Probably no, no, that's to... Cover um, his ears from the engine of the machine. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so to cover, like, if so, there's yeah. a loud sound. So it's it just too loud. Too, yeah. It's too loud. The machine is too loud. So he's trying to cover those um, uh, ears of his. Yeah. So ears is, uh, I think, moon or sun? Uh, uh, I relate. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ears, uh, Mercury. Uh, sorry? Years, they say it is connected to Jupiter. They say like this. Jupiter. Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter. Yeah. Because of uh, elephant uh, ears are huge. So he's trying to cover, uh, you know, he's trying to maintain his Jupiter. He's, he's having a strong Jupiter because of the, you know, uh, he wants to just safeguard his Jupiter maybe. So yeah, it's like, the, you know, uh, yeah. Some other things which I see here, I forgot to say, uh, they say that if somebody has too many planets in Cancer, and I have also seen this working, like I know a girl who has three planets in Cancer, Jupiter, Moon, and Mercury, these three. And uh, they say that this too many planets in Cancer can give a lot of interest towards gardening. Definitely. Because gardening is basically Definitely. what it's like. You are like a parent and you are taking care of something, right? You are... Uh, you're taking care, giving water to the plants. You're seeing that they are getting right sunlight and all this. So I sure. see, and if you see his face, it looks quite <laughs> fair. <laughs> it looks a bit feminine. So I think cancer should be very prominent. Yeah. In, in my, I, I feel like this. Definitely. I, I would say also even Mars in cancer, it's the idea of somebody who has control that Mars in cancer, who has uh, control that that virulent energy of that uh, Nisha planet and has you know relegated itself and accepted it and is now cutting the gardener the garden instead of you know just being frustrated with everything so I would say right, like, right. like a, a dominant a, a, a triumphant uh, a Mars in cancer dominated I mean it's like the the samurai that can't fight but it's in the garden so it has to uh, uh, be happy with what it has, what, 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 with what he has. Sure. So yes, let's go to the last one. So this, this is this is the last one, guys. So you've okay. done a great job. I mean, this this has been great. I think so, in the last one you should speak. What do you say? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So uh, this is gonna be very familiar to you guys, Vanita and Baba. Okay. You know, I am from Puerto Rico, and in Puerto Rico, uh, uh, Miss Universe is very uh, famous. So okay. I oh. mean. We've we've had. And, five and I think uh, the girls are very pretty also over there. Those what those are Miss Miss Universes from India, which are uh, Sumshita Sen and Lara Duta. That is fine, but otherwise, I think Puerto Rico has beautiful girls too. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, and, be and beautiful men too. You know, yeah. <laughs> yes. No. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I should have said that before speaking. Don't about worry it. about it. I get it every day. I'm just tired of everybody telling me that. But whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So that is why maybe I was refraining myself from complimenting. All right, I'm coming to Puerto Rico. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can come here. Yeah, yeah. So the no, idea is of Miss Universe. I mean, these are girls. These are women, I'm sorry. But at the same time, they are monarchs in a way. So we are having here that uh, Venus and moon energy. Of course, yeah. moon being the queen of the planetary cabinet. Yeah. And at the same time, you have Venus, which is 
the mundane counselor of the planetary cabinet, but which also is the significator of women, of beauty, of luxury, of relaxation. So you kind of get those two feminine energies coming together and how they can uh, uh, mingle and, and exist. Of course, the moon Venus conjunction is very positive from a Jaimini point of view, but from a Parashara point of view, sometimes it's not that good because uh, the moon is not necessarily happy uh, in, in uh, I'm sorry, Venus is not necessarily yeah. happy in the Rashi of Cancer. And right. uh, Venus uh, with the moon in conjunction sometimes has uh, some difficulty because it's all, you know, the necessity of, of trying to fulfill emotional um, uh, things through relationships, right? And, and as they say, you first have to love yourself before anybody can love you, right? And in a way, you see how these two feminine energies come together and how the queen, which basically is the counselor of the king, does, does not necessarily have that much say in uh, foreign policy, in uh, military actions, but has a lot to say on how um, uh, the, the kingdom, the, the people from the kingdom, the, the ideas, the opinions, how the queen tells that to the king in order for him to have a balance, in order to have a proper sense of what's going on and have that balance of female and male energy. And of course, we also have the idea of Jupiter here of, you know, just being happy, just celebrating, right? That those uh, would, uh, some, some would say those uh, less spiritual aspects of Jupiter, right? A very spiritual Jupiter would, would read the Shastras, would go to the temple, would be a very, you know, spiritual person, very academic, very studious in many ways. But yeah, the yeah, lower, yeah, yeah. yeah, the lower, uh, let's say, the, the other qualities of Jupiter would be the idea of, you know, just partying, of celebration, of pomp, of, you know, marching down the street with uh, confetti and just celebrating life as uh, the expansive kingdom of wisdom uh, Jupiter is. So yeah, those, that's my take on it. So and, and what you do you say about Jupiter that, uh, you know, uh, they, they have to be wise to win this competition. So Jupiter is predominant Definitely. here as well. Yeah. Oh, and the training they have to go through is, <laughs> it's really hard. Saturn. I, mean, I think it's Saturn. Saturn is there. Like the idea of answering in one minute what do you think is the best thing for world peace? I mean, and the, it's really hard to, to just improvise an answer. And, and I mean, Mercury is also there. Saturn is also no, there. It's, it's a very difficult competition. Of course, seen from the outside, some people might say no, for, for, but seen from the inside and the physical uh, uh, training they have to go to, diet, exercise, even surgery where Mars comes in too. I mean, it's, it's a lot of thing that goes on into these competitions. Yeah. Yeah, I also see uh, Venus and Magha Nakshatra being connected here because Magha deals with the throne and one who is at the top. So I can see that. Uh, and they also have a crown, you see. Crown. Oh my God. I was Definitely. just about to say that. Crown, yeah. yeah so that yeah. it's like Sun and Venus together. And I wouldn't call it a conjunction because then there's a danger that uh, Venus gets combust. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I would rather say Venus being in Leo, I can see that here. Or I could also say uh, Venus being in Rohini Nakshatra because Rohini is, the, is one of the best Nakshatras for Venus because uh, it is also ruled by the moon, you see. And there's a lot of showbiz and there's a tendency to stand out in Rohini because Rohini was the, or not was it, she is the favorite wife of the moon, of course. So they have this nature that I want to be the best <laughs> among all, especially among the, if, if this is in a ladies chart. And yeah, that is what I can see. Venus in Rohini or Venus in Magha or yes, that's what. <laughs> yeah, and that you, makes sense. And you Lars, guys? Lars has to say Oh, something. okay. Um, yeah, I was, I'm not sure about the Rashi at the moment, but I definitely see it as like a retrograde Venus that's oriental and possibly in the 10th house, 10th or 11th house, like somewhere, you know, high in the chart. Because Venus, when it's oriental, meaning it's rising above the horizon before the sun, uh, it's very, um, it, it wants to achieve things. It's, it's a Venus that it wants to achieve things. In this case, it's a, it's a woman 
who wants to, you know, rise very high. And, it, you know, a lot of this, even though there are these other aspects of it that you talked about, a lot of it really does center around the kind of lunar appearance of the person, you know, like the, again, that moon Venus thing coming back. And what, the one on the left here is more Venus to me and maybe some moon. The one on the right has more Mars, mainly because of the red, but you can also kind of see it in her face and her facial expression and that sort of a thing. She just is more uh, martial. She's even putting the crown on her head in this picture. Um, whereas the other one, you know, it maybe it almost looks like somebody else put it on her head because she's holding all this other stuff, you know, so she's, she's received things. But yeah, an Oriental Venus is the type of woman who, or it's going to represent the type of woman typically that's going to go after something like this. Uh, and pro probably in a day chart too, um, because when Venus is in a day chart, it also becomes more ambitious and less, um, it's kind of like less, it's less, it's less, it's cuddly self, so to speak when it's like Oriental and in a day chart. Um, so, and then I add retrograde just because the, the retrograde, um, you know, the, it just, it makes a planet super, super what it is. Basically it makes a planet like exploding with whatever it represents. And, you know, this is, this is especially the one on the, the left is just, yeah, it has all that. So. Uh, Vanita, do you want to say something else? I just want to just, uh, 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 the mixture, the concoction that you all said, you know, it's like the Jupiter felicitation. Uh, of course, the Venus, Moon, 10th house, fame, throne, and of yeah. course, uh, Mars also is involved, and uh, Mercury. I cannot miss Mercury here. The youth, the, the, the bubbliness, and the, you know, the, the joy, and the youth that is uh, reflecting here. So it's a mix of uh, so many planets, and of course, Nakshatras, Babaji has rightly said, Ra Rohini is there, Makha is there. So it's it's pretty much pretty clear, yeah. Well, guys, <laughs> I think I think you did great. I mean, what what did you think about the game? It, it, was, it was good, fun. right? Yeah. I mean, it thanks was good. For, thanks for uh, making such lovely, uh, you know, uh, presenting such lovely pictures. You you all won, by the way. You all won first prize. So oh, okay. I'm gonna send you uh, via <laughs> PayPal. I'm gonna send you the money. <laughs> Uh, it's it's twenty thousand dollars each one, so it's coming via PayPal. So I don't know when, but it's coming. I can't promise when, but it eventually will come. Yes. See, today Moon is in Punal, so whatever you say will come back to you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, we, yeah, I, I keep thinking about what's in the background of each of our photos. You know, like you've got Jupiter because you've got those two crosses. That's you know? true. I'm, I'm in my grandmother's Mercury. house. <laughs> I've got Mercury because I've got all this stuff, you know. Babajit is like Chandra Mangala. <laughs> and then Venita is like definitely Venus and maybe maybe Venus, Venus Mercury or Venus Rahu or something like that because of that. Mine is definitely <laughs> Venus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's the idea. Astrology is everywhere and we can just, you know, extrapolate all of the significators through the significations we have. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can, we can always see, especially like I say, if we want to get more accustomed to astrology, then we can see the day, uh, the nakshatra where moon is transiting. Like definitely. today, when I opened the internet, I saw something which I had seen long back, which I used to see once upon a time, but I have not seen that thing from long time, but suddenly I saw it today. And then I was like, okay, today moon is in Punarvasu. So something which we uh, used to do earlier, we are doing now. And maybe that has also happened with you, all of you also. And maybe whoever is watching. I'm, 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 a, I'm a Punarvasu nakshatra born. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And right. in fact, there was another person who was telling me that uh, she was born in Ram Nomi. And then I was like, why is she telling me today? <laughs> because Lord Ram was also born in Punarvasu. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Yes, thank you very much. And do you thank have you. any suggestions for the show which we will do next, or do you have any plans so that we can declare <laughs> now? <laughs> I think it went. I went. I think it went great. I mean, I think this this is gonna be the first of many to come. <laughs> yes, yes. And next time, I think we can uh, take up some specific topic, and then we can also definitely uh, have our individual takes on it. That will also be very good, I guess.
definitely yeah maybe we can go in for the news thing you know uh, around the world and then we can talk about that uh, through astrology we can do that also that's a very yes. good thing too Okay, so cool. whoever is watching this, you can please go and subscribe to their channels. <laughs> I'll pin all the three channels in the description below. And if you want a consultation, you can also go to their. Uh, I think in your channel itself, they will have the link to website and all this. And Fernando, you were saying uh, about your uh, channel about the videos and the language. Can you just say once? Oh yes, sure. I I I use I my YouTube channel is mainly oriented towards Spanish speaking Yotish videos, right? I'm doing English videos. I have two or three. I'm slowly doing more English video, but the idea is to create a high quality Yotish videos for the Spanish speaking peoples of the world. So you don't have to subscribe to my channel. It's in Spanish, but you know you can just go and see the English videos. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you, all three of you, for coming. And I'm very sure we will have this again and again and again. Okay. Namaste. Thank you very much. Bye. See you.